Hi, I'm James. Uh, I work for Camel Case, and yeah, and I've been working on Dexter. It's a decentralized exchange for Tesla. So I'm going to present this at a bit of a higher level and not assume that all of the audience knows Tezos. So if you, if you already know these things, please bear with me. And then we are going to do a demonstration. And then I'll leave some time for questions. And if there's not questions, I'll go into the more technical side of it. And feel free to ask about the more technical side if you have any of those questions. OK, so what is Dexter? It's a decentralized exchange for the Tezos blockchain. And what that means is it's a, is a automated market maker. So let's say you have two commodities and you want to exchange one commodity for the other. What the automated market maker means is that it provides a space to do that and it decides the price of those commodities automatically. This is modeled after Uniswap. It's a decentralized exchange on Ethereum. So a little bit about Tezos for those in the audience that don't know what, that are not as familiar with Tezos. It's a proof of stake blockchain that differs from Ethereum through its use of on-chain governments. So that means changes to Tezos are proposed on, Tez on Tezos and decided by stakeholders of Tezos tokens if they want these change to be, changes to be implemented or not. And so the holders of these Tezos tokens, which will be referred to as XTZ through the rest of the presentation, may stake their XTZ to individuals we call bakers and earn rewards. So this part about rewards is important to keep in mind because we want to maintain the right to earn these rewards for anything that's on Dexter. So what about the smart contract language side of Tezos? So we have Mickelson. It's sort of the lowest level programming language for Tezos smart contracts. And it's relatively readable for a low level programming language. It has a lot of high level data types and primitives. And then there's a lot of, there, in the ecosystem there exists languages like LIGO and Morley that compile to Mickelson. So you can code in a higher level language and output to the language that Tezos uses for smart contracts. And then before getting into Dexter directly, we need to talk about what tokens are available on Tezos. So we already mentioned XTZ. These are the native tokens of Tezos. But you can use smart contracts to create new tokens that exist in Tezos. So one of the first one, one of the first, so these are very standards. The first one's called FA1, and it's an abstract ledger. What that means is you define a total number of tokens that exist, and you allow individuals to be sent and receive tokens. So I could create a token. I could send it to any existing Tezos address, and you could become the owner of those, and then you can send those as you please. Then there's FA1.2. This is a slight, let's say, improvement of FA1. FA1.2 has the same features, plus it, it has an approvability, uh, an approvable system in it. So basically, I can give permissions to third parties to use my tokens, as I see, and I can take away those permissions. So if you are familiar with Ethereum, this is very similar to ERC20. And then finally, there's an upcoming token standard called FA2, and it's a work in progress. It is a multi-asset interface. So what does multi-asset mean? It means they, a, single token, a single contract can have multiple tokens that exist on it, and these tokens can be of different kinds. They can be fungible. Fungible means each token is the same and interchangeable, and they could be non-fungible. The, each token is unique. Think something like Magic the Gathering or Pokemon. These are sort of gaming things that you can create on blockchains. These can all be supported by in FA2. And it also allows people to design their own permission systems. So you can come up with some more abstract things. It just gives you more control. Anyway, we'll get to that a bit later. So 
Let's take a quick glance at what Dexter looks like so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So here's the user interface. Um, it, you can see there's two tokens. There's these XTZ. There's this TZG, Tezos Gold. Uh, it, these are just things we've made up. And it gives you the option to trade these tokens and put these tokens on the exchange and remove them. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Dexter and then we'll get into the actual demo. So what is so Dexter is actually two things. It's a contract and it's a web front end. So on the contract side, it's a open source Tezos smart contract that provides a decentralized exchange for FA 1.2 tokens. Or rather, you can exchange your XTZ for FA 1.2. Now how do these XTZ and FA 1.2 get there. So we have to have pools of these things. Uh, we call them liquidity pools. So it means there's a certain amount of XTZ and a certain amount of FA 1.2 that exists in the contract. So token owners are incentivized to put their tokens, uh, XTZ and FA 1.2 tokens in the exchange via transaction fees. So each time someone goes to buy one of these tokens, uh, the entire exchange will take a small transaction fee. Now this transaction fee does not belong to the contract. It does not belong to Camel Case or whoever originates the contract. It belongs to the people that have provided these fees. So how do you get these fees? Well, when you placed uh, when you placed XTZ or FA 1.2 on a token on, on an exchange, you're given what we call a liquidity token that represents your ownership of the entire pool of, Dex, of, of tokens on the Dexter. So then you can get rid of those tokens, however many you like, and then you will be rewarded a certain amount of XTZ and FA 1.2. How much you get of each of those depends on the exchange rate and also how many transactions have occurred. So if lots of transactions have occurred, you will have increased the amount of this balance of FA 1.2 and XTZ that you get. And also, there's the potential to, work, to earn baking rewards from any XTZ that you've placed on the Dexter contract. And we'll get into the details about that a little bit later. So on the web on the on the website, it's an open source front end that anyone can host. Uh, it allows a user friendly way to interact with the Dexter smart contract. So, if you like, you could interact with these via the command line, but it's not very user friendly. However, for things you want to automate, that definitely makes sense. And it uses some web wallet software. Right now, what we have implemented uses Tezbridge. There's another one in development called Beacon uh, that we're going to support. If you're familiar with Ethereum, there's uh, a Chrome extension called MetaMask. Beacon is similar to that. And what these wallets do is they help you, act, they help you interact with the Tezos node and sign transactions to the Tezos node that interact with the Dexter, uh, the Dexter exchange. And to run these, this front end, it actually does not communicate to a separate backend server. We're not saving any of your data. All this, all this is doing is communicating with the Tezos node and the wallet software. So I think now let's, let's go to a quick demo so it can be a little bit more clear what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is from our website. This is Dexter. This is running on Babylon Net, and you can you can actually access it if you want. It's not super user friendly yet, but we're working on it. So the first thing it asks you to do is to connect to a wallet, and when you click connect to wallet, it opens up a new tab for Tezbridge. So Tezbridge has its own way of managing your public and private keys. You can do that manually by putting your private key, which I don't recommend unless you are just doing test development on Babylonet or Carthage. You can also use uh, a ledger. 
Anyway, I have a few accounts set up here, so let's log into one. So we're gonna, I log into Alice, I'm gonna use Alice as a signer, and now I go back to Dexter. So I've logged in, and you can see that I'm on the swap screen. I have a certain amount of, of XTZ. Let me zoom in so it's a little clearer. So Alice has 1,500 XTZ. She has 790,000 Tezos gold. And below you'll see how much the exchange has of each of those. So let's say I want to sell some of my XTZ and get some gold. So the current exchange rate is one XTZ to about 42 Tezos gold. Uh, it rounds down a bit for that transaction fee. And so then I click here. Uh, Tezbridge is asking me to okay a request from, the, from Dexter so I can test it before deciding what, if I want to do this trade. So this will clearly tell you all the parameters, where it's going, how much T, uh, XTZ you're spending, and then this shows what would, this sort of applies it, it pre-applies it and lets you know what is likely to happen when it's applied. So now let's approve it. Okay, so now that exchange has been approved on the blockchain, uh, this, the website isn't updating automatically, but we, we can wait for a minute for it to propagate into, into the Tezos nodes. And then if we reload this, we're going to see that uh, the amount of TZG we have is, should go up about by 40. So right now it's 854. Let's reload. Uh, and it, it went up a bit. And so actually we should have took a look at the XTZ value. It, it went down. So now we can actually provide liquidity to uh, an exchange. So right here I have XTZ, and it sort of, it helps you calculate the equivalent amount because you have to provide an equivalent amount of XTZ and the FA1.2 token. So I'll do the same thing. So I'd be providing about 12 XTZ, 510 Tezos gold. And something isn't working. <laughs> Let me try that again. Well, unfortunately, on this screen, there's a technical error. Let me try remove liquidity. So these are my pool to my liquidity tokens from Tezos Gold. So this shows a proportion, basically a proportion of the entire collection of XTZ and <coughs> FA 1.2 that I own. So it's quite a large number, 4 billion. And the exchange has a little more than that, so I own most of the liquidity. But let's say I want to get rid of some of that. Let's say, like, what's that? Five, five million. So that would return, if I get rid of five million pool tokens, that would give me 5.4 XTZ and 230 Tezos gold. Okay, so I tested it, it should work. I'll approve it. Um, after, so we're gonna wait for it to propagate a bit. You can already see on the right-hand side that I have, I've recorded the transactions. These are all recorded locally, not in a backend server, in the, lo in the browser locally, that I requested to remove five million Tezos Gold pool tokens. So I'm gonna reset this. Or I'm going to reload this, and we should see this value change. So right now it's 12 million. We reloaded, and here you can see it went down by about 5 million. And proportionally, my XTZ and TZG should have gone up.
So I think that should give you a, a basic idea of what Dexter does. So let's talk a little bit more about the details. Okay, so we went over liquidity. That's the two pools of tokens that uh, exist in a single exchange. So each exchange represents, uh, each exchange contract represents an FA 1.2 token. So if there are multiple FA 1.2 tokens, those each need uh, an exchange contract originated. So users can provide liquidity and they can report they can burn a, a portion of their liquidity and get back equal amounts of XCZ and FA 1.2. So we saw that in this screen where you can add liquidity. And then in this screen, we saw where you can remove liquidity and gain XCZ and FA 1.2. So what else can you do? A user can sell XTZ to get FA 1.2, and a user can also sell FA 1.2 to get XTZ at the exchange rate that exists in the contracts. And, 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 you, have to, and you, can only, you can only, you obviously can't buy more than exists in these contracts. And also to sort of help maintain the levels of the, the, the pool size of these contracts, large, large exchanges are sort of prevented by by, by creating a slippage in the exchange rate. So if you do a very large trade, like you try to take 50% of the FA 1.2 from the Dexter contract, you would get a much worse exchange rate than if you had tried to take 5%. So this is sort of to keep these, keep these things balanced and not have these exchanges emptied out and let multiple people interact with them. Uh, so this is sort of a review of the UI for the swapping for XTZ to an FA 1.2. And then in the same screen, uh, if you click on the left side, you can drop down and choose another token and you can decide to change it for, exchange it for XTZ. So that part is pretty clear. Um, now let's talk about the baking reward. So, these tokens exist in the, these, this XTZ is going to belong, sort of belong to the Dexter contract. And <clears throat> any contract can essentially set, set a baker who will uh, essentially be sort of barring their staking power for, on Tezos and they will be gaining rewards and returning those er, rewards to Dexter. So since this is a, a decentralized exchange, multiple, uh, each individual will, may have their idea of who the best baker would be or who the baker they'd like. So each baker sort of has the power to decide how much of the rewards they're going to return and when they return those rewards. So there's nothing in the Tezos, Tezos blockchain that says bakers must return those rewards. It's rather that they decide to do those and because they have a record of returning those rewards, people are going to stake their stake their, Tezo, their XTZ with those bakers. So you could just set the delegate from the beginning when you originate the contract, but that's pretty in, inflexible because uh, maybe that that baker decides no longer to bake, so you'll lose out on those rewards, or they'll decide to keep them after some point. So we've sort of had a lot of discussion about a voting system versus an auction system. And at the beginning, we thought a voting system where people who provide liquidity for these exchanges has the right to decide who the baker is of the exchange. But we've sort of went over a lot of game theory issues and there's we've we've come across a few vulnerabilities in that one uh people who are interested in a particular baker could provide a lot of liquidity for this and they essentially own all of the voting power like if essentially they could have 51 percent of the voting power they could 
give it to a particular baker and they can just keep those rewards and no one can say anything. So they get to keep all the money. Or you could have just a very split uh, votes, like you have like maybe people voting for 10 different bakers and so each baker has a very small percentage, so it's very easy for an uh, interested party to sort of take over that. Then uh, where we're thinking about, about now is an auction system. So instead of saying that the liquidity providers can vote on who the baker is, the bakers come and they sort of give upfront rewards to bake for the exchange for a set period of time. So in so this way, the exchange is guaranteed to get some sort of rewards. It, as opposed to the voting system where someone can be voted in, they could steal the rewards, and maybe people would vote them out in the next in the next round of votes, but there's also the risk of a large, a, a large liquidity holder continuously voting for that particular baker, baker, which presumably they may own and keep the rewards. So, if you're sort of if you're interested in this issue with a voting system, there's a discussion on Tezos Agora that's pretty interesting that talks about uh, all the pros and cons and ways it can be gamed. So. Right now we have the auction system, so bakers periodically bid for the right to be an ex the Dexter Exchange's baker, and we don't really expect that they'll pay rewards. Instead, they'll, the bid compensates for the rewards that would go into the system. And so where are we now with Dexter? It's an open source repository. Um, you can find it on GitLab, camelcase-dev. Uh, Dexter. Um, we're still working on a few things before we consider the first version of Dexter complete. So we're working on a formal specification and a formal proof. We would like to integrate Beacon into Dexter. So if you saw how I was using Tezbridge, I had to switch back and forth between tabs. That doesn't really create a nice user experience. So one thing about Dexter is that we'd like to have a really nice user experience and let it be something that people who are not software developers can use and understand what's happening. Um, we'd also like to optimize the, the gas costs of Dexter. Right now it's a bit high. We'd like to improve that. And finally, and once we have all that, we'd perform a security audit. And then we're, I mean, these aren't done, but we're already thinking of version two and what we'd like beyond that. We'd want to support FA2, which is a much more interesting uh, token standard and any other token standards that the community is going to be interested in. Uh, we'll explore other automatic market models. So right now we have a very simplistic one, but there's some things you can do with historical data and if you if the system has a very a very trustworthy exchange rate then it can even be used as a price oracle for third parties to use um, also explore alternative baking models we'll get into a little bit later but there are a few issues even with the auction system that can be used can be abused and then finally create a reusable sdk so right now uh, we have a set of a set of code in ReasonML, so you can interact with Dexter on the front end, but if other people are interested in using this with other programming languages, other ecosystems, that's something we'd like to support. So I'd like to mention a few people because, yes, Camel Case has been working on this, but we've also been working in conjunction with other people. So first I'd like to mention Arvid. He's in the audience, uh, you can wave to him. <laughs> He's been working on the formal specification and doing a lot of conversation with us with uh, gaming issues, problems he sees in the contracts, and it's nice to have a third party who's not involved in the development sort of review the code. Also Airgap, they are working on Beacon and that's going to be a very nice way, essentially, to have a wallet in a Chrome in, in Chrome and interact with DApps in 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 websites. Uh, TQ Tezos has been working on the token standards, and they've helped us a lot with getting in touch with interested parties 
Uh, we use LIGO and we've also used Morley to develop these contracts. So thanks to those groups. And finally, Arthur Brightman has been involved also in discussing a lot of the game theory issues. So I want to open it up to questions now. And here, I, I won't force anyone to answer this question, but it's one sort of outstanding issue, which basically states that uh, in the auction system, bakers, uh, bake, bakers want to gain the, gain the right to bake for this exchange because it could have a lot of XTZ. People want to put XTZ into this because they want the, they, they not only want the transaction fees, they also want the rewards from, from baking. So there's a problem in that people could put in their XTZ uh, and once the rewards are rewarded from baking, they'll remove it, and then the amount of rewards that actually produces from a period of baking is reduced, and then these bakers are less incentivized to bake for these uh, for, to bake for these contracts, and then they it's sort of they won't bid for these anymore. So, sort of an idea we have is to pay those rewards slowly but we're still sort of thinking what the best way to do that is uh, in actual code because we're always concerned about reducing gas costs and uh, making these as simple as possible to use. So uh, any questions from the audience? So uh, my question is simple. So uh, you have XTZ and as is gold, for example. Yes. Uh, I uh, do. I have uh, uh, possibility to put on your contract Tezos gold. Um, do you mean to make so each contract is paired with with a particular FA one point two? So Tezos gold. You could have Tezos silver. So I can put Tezos token, and I would have profit both from baking. And from exchange, yes. But if I put token, yeah, I would have only profit for exchange. Okay, so if you put liquidity, you have to have both. So you have to, and it, the amount you put has to match the exchange rate. So if you don't have any, you can buy some first and then put it on. Okay. Uh, other question. I put a lot of Tezos gold. Yes. And for some reason, all this Tezos gold is sold by this contract. Yeah. So uh, how contract would be repay me if I want to withdraw? Right. So now you're going to have a lot of XTZ. So you're going to be happy. <laughs> Maybe. If Tezos gold is... is So that would, that would ex essentially mean that Tezos gold is now worth a lot of XTZ. But uh, how could contract calculate price if there would be no Tezos gold at all and no one uh, supply liquidity? Um, so it, so it sort of tries to avoid having... So you can't have one at zero and the other at non-zero. Essentially, they at least each have to have one. On Unless there could be the case that the last liquidity provider removes everything, and then it's zero zero. So now, who? So so okay. So I did mention the first liquidity provider decides the exchange rate, and then people can sort of. Uh, so if nothing, so it's an automatic market. The exchange rate is essentially a proportion of FA one point two to XTZ. So if I make this new contract, I put one XTZ, I put a thousand Tezos gold. I've decided that uh, one XTZ is worth a thousand Tezos gold. So now for you to add liquidity, you have to abide by that exchange rate, but you can change it. You can change the exchange rate by either selling XTZ to the contract or selling uh, gold to the contract. So if uh, someone want to use this smart contract to create new pair. Yeah. It sh uh, should have some 
uh, Tezos and gold and should never remove this liquidity otherwise something else would have control to control all the price. I mean, if that matters to you, it can you can do that. So I that can that can happen. Uh it just depends if that, you know, what if that matters to you or not. If it if someone else gets control of the for of of the exchange rate, but it it fluctuates depending on how much like the size of these pools. So you so the outside world sort of has con the ability to influence these by buying and selling so they can sort of change change the exchange rate and we also buy, we sort of try to disincentivize large exchange large exchanges that empty one of the pools by lowering the exchange rate at the larger the exchange becomes okay. i would i would Thank I, you. um i i will I have a document with the calculations for how all these works, and uh, if anyone's interested, I'll I'll point you towards that. But that'll just be in the repo. We have some documents that uh, that explain what Dexter is and the various calculations. Okay. Any more questions? We have time. Okay. So if there are no more questions, let's thank James for uh, his presentation.